Welcome back to Monday Minute. We're glad you're here. We pray that this time strengthens your walk with God. I have shared before how I'm learning that I believe some wrong things about the character of God. I share with you from my own personal journey. I'm realizing that wrong assumptions about God can cause all manner of damage. If you build anything on the wrong foundation, everything else is compromised. For example, if you believe that God is angry, unpredictable, and untrustworthy, you're likely going to have faulty beliefs elsewhere. I have been reading through the Old Testament, and I wanted to see God's goodness and learn more of his character there in the Old Testament. Every day before I read that day's passage, I pray and I ask God to reveal himself to me, to show me his character so that I might know him more. As God answers these cries of my heart, I realize that the more I know him, the more I love him. The more I know his character, the more I understand in my heart that he is trustworthy. If he's trustworthy, then I can trust his commands to be for my good. He tells me so, and he never lies. My studies have brought me to Deuteronomy. It seems that the theme of the book is the state of Israel's heart. The law has been given. The generation that wouldn't go into the promised land because of their unbelief have all died in the last 40 years of wilderness wandering. The promised land is in sight again. Moses is reminding the people of all the important things they need to remember. Let's read Deuteronomy 8, 1 to 6. The whole commandment that I command you today, you shall be careful to do, that you may live and multiply and go in and possess the land that the Lord swore to give to your fathers. And you shall remember the whole way that the Lord your God has led you these 40 years in the wilderness, that he might humble you, testing you to know what is in your heart whether you would keep his commandments or not. And he humbled you and let you hunger and fed you with manna, which you did not know, nor did your fathers know, that he might make you know what, that man does not live by bread alone, but man lives by every word of, that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Your clothing did not wear out on you, and your foot didn't swell these four years. Know then in your heart that as a man disciplines his son, the Lord your God disciplines you. So you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God by walking in his ways and fearing him. Do you think that God uh, didn't know what was in the heart of the Israelites? I think he did know. Perhaps the Israelites needed it to be shown so they wouldn't be in denial. What you believe in your heart about someone will prove itself or come to light when that person gives you a command that is up against your insecurities or fears. If the one giving the command has proven that he's trustworthy and he loves you, obedience would show that you believe this in your heart. Did you, do you know what was deep down in Israel's heart the first time they came to the edge of the land God promised them? Deuteronomy 1.27 tells us, this is what was actually in their hearts. This is what they said out loud. They assumed that the Lord hated them and only led them out of Egypt to destroy them. They saw that giants lived there. They saw fortified cities that looked too difficult to overtake. They were afraid and discouraged. This response showed a lack of trust in God. They were not certain God was to be trusted. Right away, they made wrong assumptions about God and his motives. Can you identify? Or is it just me who struggles with this? Unfortunately, sometimes as soon as I'm faced with something that is frightful and overwhelming for me, I tend to jump to the wrong conclusions. God doesn't really love me. He will leave me. He's just waiting to give me what I deserve. He wants to destroy me. Meanwhile, God is saying, trust me, obey me. I know what is best. In me, there's no darkness. It's going to be good for you in the end. What you believe in your heart matters. It will eventually show when we are put to the test. Deuteronomy has many warnings to be careful and keep the commands of the Lord and to purposely call to mind what he has done so far. It is in remembering who God is and how he's worthy of our trust that Israel will stay out of trouble. God wants them to obey his commands because they are for their good. Obedience proves trust. Obedience is a safeguard against pride. Pride raises itself up and will cloud their vision of who God is and who they are. Deuteronomy 10, 12, and 13 tells Israel how to live the good life God wants. Number one, fear the Lord your God. He's your own personal God and he is worthy of reverence and honor and respect. Number two, walk in his ways. Your whole manner of life should be in line with him. Number three, love him. Train your heart to be affectionate with him. 
Get your emotions involved. Four, serve the Lord with all of your being. Work and labor for the Lord with all of your thinking, your desires, and your understanding. Five, keep his commands and statutes. Be careful to protect and do what he has commanded. His boundaries are good. All of this was for their good. God didn't need them. They needed God. Following this will help them remember who it is that gives them life. It keeps them from rebellion in their hearts and from turning away from God. Jesus gave us these same commandments in the New Testament. He was constantly up against religious followers that thought they were, that thought they were righteous because of how good they followed the rules. They wanted to know what the most important commandment was, probably just to prove how righteous they were. Jesus gave two commandments that can summarize all the other commandments, and they had to do with their hearts, how and who they loved. Humans tend to think that commandments are the most important thing. The commandments and the rules are not to be worshiped. They are to help our hearts remember who God is and how to treat others. The commandments Jesus gave in Mark 12, 30 and 31 are this, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind and with all your strength. And the second was to love your neighbor as yourself. If we love God with every part of ourselves, loving our neighbor will be a natural outcome. We will love who God loves. If we love God with absolutely all we have, we trust his heart. We cannot have love without trust. Obedience will follow. Whenever we find ourselves struggling to obey God, we would be wise to ask ourselves, what is it that's in our heart that is causing us to doubt God? God knows what's in our heart. We can be like King David admit, and admit our sins and wrong thinking right to God and ask him to forgive us, to cleanse us, and to create a new, clean heart that thinks rightly. A heart that is in love with God is honest with him. He is trustworthy with our heart, so we can be honest. God knew the Israelites would take their eyes off of him and be led astray. He promised that they, if they ever found themselves serving something other than him, that they, if they would just stop and seek the Lord with all their heart and all their soul, they would find him. If you're starting to realize that your actions prove that you might have some thinking that is off in your heart, can I encourage you to cry out to Jesus? Ask him by the power of, of his spirit to reveal any faulty assumptions. As you do this, you will replace the faulty thinking with the truth and your heart will be free to love with all your being. I'm gonna read Hebrews 7, 25. Consequently, he is able to save to the uttermost those who draw near to God through him, since he always lives to make intercession for them. I was talking about Jesus. Jesus will, will make whole and heal and rescue from danger those who come close to God through him. Draw near to God through Jesus and he will save you entirely and completely. As we trust his love and as we have correct thinking about him, it will show in our actions. May God bless you.